So we've looked at solving by graphing. The next thing that we're going to look at is solving systems by substitution. Part of why we have different ways to solve is because sometimes they're more convenient than the others. So, so solving by graphing is great when they're both y equals because they're ready to begin with b and move with m. Substitution is handy when at least one of the variables is by itself. So either x equals something or y equals something. So we want to use when one equation is solved for a variable, solved for a variable. You want to identify which, vari which variable is isolated, that means by itself. We're going to copy the other equa equation with parentheses, a nice big parentheses, where that, where that variable appears. Then we're going to do something, it seems a little redundant, we're going to substitute and solve, substitute and solve. Because I have two variables, that's why I have to do that process two times. So let's look at our first example. So in this example, x is what's by itself. So what I do is I look at my other equation, I put parentheses where the x is, and now what I'm going to do is copy this exact equation, but when I get to that x, I'm just going to leave a blank parentheses. So it looks like this, 3 parentheses plus 4y equals 9. And now into that parentheses, I'm going to put everything that the x was equal to. So x was equal to 2y plus 3, so I substitute in 2y plus 3. And if I ignore the first two lines of the problems, now I have what you've done before with solving a multi-step equation. So what would be my normal first step? Distribute. So I'm going to distribute that 3. 3 times 2y is 6y. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 4y equals 9. Now I can combine some like terms. I have a 6y and a 4y, so I can combine that to be 10y plus 9 equals 9. And then it's a two-step equation. Subtract 9 from both sides, so 10y equals 0. And my last step is to divide by 10. Now that doesn't mean it's no solution, it means it's 0. 0 is a number. No solution means that there's no number that's going to make the equation true. But if I think about it, I had two variables. So I have one of my variables for the solution, which is that my y is 0. But now I need to take that y is 0 and plug it in an equation. It doesn't matter whether I do the first or the second one, but when I'm doing substitution, this first one is usually the way to go, the one where your variable's been isolated. So I'm going to use x equals 2y plus 3. Since we found out that y is 0, I'm going to plug in 0 for y up here. So x equals 2 times 0 plus 3. And we just simplify from there. So x equals 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 equals 3. So my x value is 3. So what do we do? We substituted for x, solved for y, then we substituted for y and solved for x. So my answer was 3, 0 for that one. In this equation, it's my y that's by itself. So what I do is I put parentheses around the y in the other equation. And it's not always that the first equation is solved for your variable, it doesn't matter what order is. So I'm going to copy that second equation but when I get to the y, I'm going to put a giant parenthesis. So minus 4 parentheses equals negative 8. And into that parentheses, I put what y was equal to, which was negative 2x plus 3. And now I have a normal multi-step equation to solve. So our first step is going to be distributing that negative 4. So I'm going to come down here, negative 4x negative 4 times negative 2x, you want to make sure you're watching signs, is positive 8x. 
negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12, and that equals negative 8. Now I have some like terms I can combine. Negative 4x plus 8x would be 4x minus 12 equals negative 8. Now we got a two-stepper. Add 12, so 4x equals 4, and last step is to divide by 4. So I get that x equals 4 divided by 4 is 1 x equals 1. So my final answer, I can go ahead and put my coordinate 1 something. But since this is a point, I need an x value. Once again, when I'm doing substitution, usually one of these equations is easier than the other. So I'm going to use this first equation, and I'm going to substitute in 1 for x. y equals negative 2x plus 3. And I'm going to bring this x into my equation up here and make it y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 3. So y equals negative 2 plus 3, which means y equals positive 1. So both of those coordinates ended up being 1. You could always check it like we did when we did solving by graphing and check to make sure this was a solution. If you plug them back into the original two equations, it's a quick way to check and make sure that you did the problem right. So that's one form of substitution where only one equation is solved for a variable. The other type is the one that's the most commonly missed problem. And we talked about this when we did function notation way back when it looked something like this, f of x equals something f of x equals something. We talked about how if the left sides of an equation are the same, that means that the right sides of the equation are the same, aka I can set them equal. So now we're going to apply that idea here, except for now instead of having one thing was just a number, one of these now, or both of them rather, are going to be equations. So if I look at my system, and sometimes they use this little bracket thing, to mean that it's a system. If I look at the left sides of my equation, what do you notice? They're both equal to y, right? So that means if the left sides are the same, then the right sides are the same. And in math, the same means that we can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to set the first part, 3x plus 10, equal to the second part, negative x minus 2, and here goes my multi-step equation to solve. Now I have a variable on both sides, so I'm going to choose to add the x because I don't like negatives. So plus x to both sides. That gives me 4x plus 10 equals negative 2. And now we have a two-step equation. So minus 10 from both sides. Same signs, add and keep the signs. So that's going to be 2 plus 10 is 12 and keep the negative. I have 4x. And last step is to divide by 4 on both sides. So I get x equals negative 3. But you're not done, because remember the solution to a system is a coordinate. So I need an x and a y. Now in this one, it's equally easy to plug in the x equals negative 3 into either equation. So I'm just going to go with the first one. If you want to be different, then you can do the second one. We should end up at the same answer. That's what it means to be a solution. So y equals 3 times negative 3 plus 10. So y equals negative 9 plus 10 and y equals 1. Notice we keep getting 1 a lot. That's just because it's a lot happier um, to make these kind of tinier numbers. All right, last one. Same idea. Now when I look at the left sides of the equation, what do you notice about the left sides of the equation? They're both x. So if the left sides are the same, that means the right sides are the same. And what does the same mean in math? The same means equal to each other. So I can set 4y minus 1 equal to 5y plus 6 and solve that equation. So for me, I'm going to move the 4y. So 
so I need to subtract 4y from both sides. You can move the 5y if you don't mind negatives. Nobody cares. Negative 1 equals y plus 6. And my last step is going to be minus 6 on both sides. So no matter what you moved, the 5y or the 4y, we should all end up with y being negative 7. When you're solving a system, you need x and a y. So I have my y is negative 7, and now I can substitute into um, either one of my equations. I like the first one again. So x equals 4y minus 1. x equals 4 times negative 7 minus 1. So x equals, we're getting a big number here because I didn't work this out beforehand. You're welcome. Uh, x equals negative 28 minus 1. So x equals negative 29. And if I really wasn't sure, especially because I have a weird number in this one, you could always go back in and check it in the second equation.